الله أكبر 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 كلما أحرموا من الميقات الله أكبر كلما لب الملبون وزيد في الحسنات وكلما دخلوا فجاج مكة وتلك الرحبات وكلما طافوا بالبيت العتيق وضجت الأصوات بالدعوات وكلما سعوا بين الصفا والمروة وتلك المشاعر المفضلات وكلما وقفوا خاضعين بعرفات وكلما أريق هناك من العبرات وكلما نظر إليهم الجبار من فوق سبع سماوات وكلما باتوا بمزدلفة ورموا الجمرات الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد الحمد لله الذي خلق آدم بيده من صلصال كالفخار وأحظاه بجواره وأسجد له ملائكته المقربين الأطهار فسجدوا إلا إبليس أبا فباء باللعنة والصغار أحمده سبحانه على نعمه الغزار وأشكره على مترادف فضله المدرار وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له توحيدا مقتنا أقتنيه اليوم الفاقة وإنه لنعم المقتنى متظاهرا عليه الجنان واللسان سرا وعلنا مشهودا به لربنا كما شهد به لنفسه معلما مبينا فقال إنني أنا الله لا إله إلا أنا وأشهد أن سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله أفضل من صلى ونحر وحج واعتمر ووقف بعرفة والمشعر نبي ما طلعت الشمس على أجمل منه وجها ولا أنور ولا أرفع منه قدرا ولا أكبر نبي خص ببعثته إلى الأسود والأحمر نبي غفر الله له ما تقدم من ذنبه وما تأخر ومع ذلك قام على قدمه الشريف حتى تفطر وجاهد في الله حق جهاده فما توانى ولا تأخر اللهم صل وسلم على عبدك ورسولك محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه الذين أذهب الله عنهم الرجس وطهر الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد أما بعض فيا أيها الناس اتقوا الله تعالى واعلموا أن يومكم هذا يوم فضيل وعيد شريف جليل رفع الله تعالى قدره وأظهره وسماه يوم الحج الأكبر يجتمع فيه الحاج بمنا يستكملون مناسك الحج يحيون سنة أبيهم إبراهيم بما يذبحونه في هذا اليوم العظيم من القرابين فإن الله تعالى أمره بذبح ولده وفلذة كبده فامتثل أمر ربه طائعا وخرج بابنه مسارعا وقال يا بني إني أرى في المنام أني أذبحك فانظر ماذا ترى فقال يا أبت يا فقال يا أبت افعل ما تؤمر لا متوقفا ولا ولا متفكرا فاستسلما جميعا للقضاء المحتوم وسلما أمرهما إلى الحي القيوم فلما أسلما وتله للجبين وأهوى إلى حلقه بالسكين اطلع الله تعالى منهما على صدق النية واليقين ونظر إليهما بعين الرحمة وهو أرحم الراحمين فنودي أن يا إبراهيم قد صدقت الرؤيا 
إنا كذلك نجزي المحسنين إن هذا له البلاء المبين فأتي بكبش فذبح فداء ولده فاعتبروا يا أولي الأبصار فكانت سنة مؤكدة في ذريته على القول المختار وعن ابن عباس رضي الله عنهما قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ما عمل ابن آدم يوم النحر عملا أحب إلى الله من إراقة دم وإنه لا يأتي يوم القيامة بأصفارها وأشعارها وقرونها وعن ابن عباس كذلك رضي الله عنهما عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أنه قال أحضروها إذا ذبحتم فإنه يغفر لكم عند أول قطرة من دمها وعن زيد بن أرقم رضي الله عنه أنهم قالوا يا رسول الله ما هذه الأضاحي قال سنة إبراهيم قالوا فما لنا فيها قال بكل شعرة حسنة روى الإمام البخاري عن عبد الله بن عمر رضي عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال أربع من كن فيه كان منافقا ومن كانت فيه خصلة منهم كانت فيه خصلة من النفاق حتى يضعها إذا حدث كذب وإذا وعد أخلف وإذا خاصم فجر وإذا عاهد غدر The famous hadith narrated by Imam al-Bukhari, the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, there are four properties which, if present in a person, make him a munafiq, a hypocrite. And if he has one of these properties within him, he has one of the qualities of hypocrisy within him, until he abandons it. When he speaks, he tells lies. And when he promises, he breaks his promises. And when he argues, he goes beyond the limits of what is true. And when he enters into a pledge, he does not fulfill that pledge. The Hajj, which now comes to an end, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whether we have been yet or not, gather us all one day at the plain of Arafat, so that our sins may be washed away together with our tears on that extraordinary place. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gather us together when the sacrifices are being made so that our sins may be washed away by those, sac by those sacrifices and by that splashing of the blood which recalls the sacrifice of our forefather Ibrahim Khalilullah alayhi salam Amin ya Rabbil Alameen May he make us all people of the Hajj that this is a time of the commemoration of the fulfillment of Allah's promise Sadaqa wa'adahu and the Holy Prophet وسلم, promised this, did not doubt for a moment. And for this was one of the sadiqeen, one of those who believe and one of those who are believable. A quality within us all is that sometimes we are inwardly weak. However outwardly strong and compliant we might be, we might go to Allah's house five times a day. Alhamdulillah. But that is our outward form. Are we in Allah's house inwardly five times a day? What is the test of that? What is the litmus test? How can we see if we are really in the mosque? If we are really prostrating and bowing to Rabbil Alameen? If we really feel that we are repeating his own glorious words, how do we know that? Religion is not just a matter of outward compliance but of inward reality. And thus it is said by the Holy One, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالُ بِالنِّيَّةِ Actions are only by intentions. How can we know that our intentions are where our outward form is? And what is the alternative? The alternative is the most despicable of all states, which is outwardly to be going along with what seems to be right but inwardly for our minds to be hesitant, to be wandering, to be distracted, to have more than one qibla. 
the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had promised his companions because his Lord had promised him and he is the one who is truly sadiq subhanahu wa ta'ala لَتَدْخُلُنَّ الْمَسْجِدَ الْحَرَامِ You shall certainly enter the sacrosanct mosque. And this was at a time when the mushrikeen were besieging Medina and the ahzab were everywhere and it looked as if there was very little hope for this small band of muhajireen and ansar and sometimes the hearts grew faint. And the likelihood of the truth of this promise seemed unlikely. And this was the test. There were some who believed the Holy Prophet وسلم, and in the first rank, Sayyidina Abu Bakr al-Siddiq. Uh, Siddiq is the opposite of Munafiq. The true believer, the one who believes not just with his words but with his heart. So he is the one who, when he hears the extraordinary, unbelievable news of the Mi'raj, he does not waver for a moment. He believes it without his mind reflecting for a second because he knows the quality of the Chosen One, alayhi salatu wasalam. He has been with him, he has suffered with him, he knows his heart. But we cannot all be like a Siddiq. Siddiq is like the affirmation, the fullest form of Sadiq, which is to be truthful, to speak the truth, because one is inwardly a truthful person and believes in God's truth. We can't always <laughs> aspire to anything like that degree. There are within our hearts voices that whisper, lazy voices, voices that say, yes, well, perhaps, perhaps some other time, maybe, who knows, that whisper to us even during the prayer when our forehead is in the place that affirms our ubudiya, our slavehood to Rabbil Alameen, maybe our hearts are not in that sajda, but our hearts are faint, weak, somewhere else. And so this business of the munafiqeen, who are the greatest threat really to the Holy Prophet والسلام, in Medina, the armies of the mushrikeen outside, beyond Uhud, are a visible threat, but there's an inward threat as well. Just as there is in our lives the outward threat of disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and giving way to those false qiblas in our lives and not bothering with Allah's commandments, there is also an inward threat, the munafiqeen within, those secret junood, those shayateen which inhabit our souls, which are in the medina of our hearts, which say, well, perhaps, or not today, or I hope so, and aren't really sadiqeen with the chosen one, alayhi salatu wasalam. That's a greater threat. This shirk khafi, this inward idolatry, more dangerous than the outward idolatry of the foolish Arab tribes with their gods of stone and wood, the inward idolatry that we can all fall into by having more than one qibla, even when outwardly we have only one. And so the chosen one, alayhi salatu wasalam, the greatest psychologist of all history, the one who had this firasa that saw into people's hearts and souls and knew who were the munafiqeen, huh? but the sharia judges by the outward, so he would not punish them. But he knew who they were. He knew their treacherous possibilities. He knew that they might well waver on the field of battle or not turn up for the fight. He knew that they might well even conspire treacherously with the enemies of Islam to bring about the destruction and the massacre of the believers. Yet he did not move against them because he is a man of honor. And outwardly they are people of la ilaha illallah. But inwardly, what are we to do with the sickness? Fi qulubihim marad. What are we to do? So he gives us, alayhi salatu wasalam, certain signs. How do we recognize hypocrisy in others? Well, we shouldn't. Always give others the benefit of the doubt. But don't give yourself the benefit of the doubt. Look, try and become your own heart surgeon. Try and take a scalpel in your hand and cut open your heart to see what is actually going on in there. Little clumps of darkness. Uh, little coagulations, blood clots, accumulations clogging the arteries. We all have heart disease. And so he says, alayhi salatu wasalam, that there are ways in which we can self-diagnose. We need to do this. <laughs> Who doesn't want to know the state of his own physical heart, but more important still is the state of the heart, which will remain with us uncorrupted in the grave and for eternity. 
We need to look into that heart. Every one of us, particularly those of us who think we don't really need to. And so he says, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that there's certain outward signs of this inward sickness. We can take the pulse of the heart. We can listen carefully. We can huh, rig ourselves up to the prophetic cardiogram and see what's going on. So he says, alayhi salatu wasalam, in a number of hadith, but this is the one that we have selected for today, that there are four qualities. And if you have all four of them, then you're a munafiq. Beware. Nobody in the world, believing or unbelieving, respects the person who is inwardly not what he outwardly says he is. Every culture despises that two-tongued person. But how can we recognize this? Let's think, here is the prophetic prescription, the diagnosis, and he's saying, go and consider this, apply it. When he speaks, he tells lies. And when he promises, he ends up breaking his promises. And when he gets into a dispute, he goes beyond the, the bounds. And when he is in a pledge or a contract, uh, he betrays that. These are the qualities of those who almost succeeded in their plot to make the final pilgrimage and the opening of Mecca and that great glorious consummation of the prophetic story the consummation of all prophetic stories, the great moment of history, none greater, none more transformative, the one that made it possible for us all to be here today, that has changed our lives and given us such a bright horizon, they were the ones who conspired against this. So let's just look at what the ulama have to say about these four qualities. And I will consider them, and inshallah we will all consider them, and we will teach our children this brilliance of prophetic psychology. Telling lies, sidq, truthfulness, is what the Lord does. Sadaqa wa'dahu, he cannot tell lies. And he says, kabura maqtan inda Allah an taqulu ma la taf'alun. It is a great crime, a great horror in the sight of Allah that you say what you do not do. Oh yes, brother, I pray five times a day, and yes, brother, I've done this, and yes, brother, I'm supporting X, Y, Z. A straightforward lie in this respect is in the sight of Allah something very grave. But other lies also are reprehensible, even those which are not lying directly about our religious state, because they indicate a weakness in our hearts, a desire for other people to think well of us, when we should only desire the rida, the satisfaction of the Lord of the worlds. The opinion of others does not matter. If you live a humble and decent Muslim life, you should not care what others are saying, but you should care very much what is the opinion of the Lord of the Worlds, because on the Day of Judgment, nobody is going to be judging you. They will all be saying, nafsi, nafsi, and all of those assessments will be gone, except the unblinking eye of Rabb al-Alameen. It is his opinion of you that matters alone. What other people think, even if you have to say something that hurts and makes you look dishonorable, never mind, say it. Be amongst those who are truthful. So that is the first. And then the second of these notes in the prophetic diagnosis. When he makes promises, he doesn't actually fulfill that promise. Now there's two kinds of this, the ulama say. The first is to promise something while knowing that one does not intend to carry it through. That's obviously a form of hypocrisy and a form of lying. But the other is to promise something and then later on not to follow it through for whatever reason. So the Holy Prophet says, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in a hadith in Ibn Mas'ud, لا يعيد أحدكم صبيه ثم لا ينجزه له. The Holy Prophet says, don't make promises even to your children that you are not going to bring about. Don't say, I'll take you on holiday to such and such an entertainment park if only you stop fighting in the back of the car. No, if you make that promise, 
even to your children, you have to fulfill that promise. And this is the Holy Prophet's directive. Children also have the right not to be lied to. The believer is the one who fulfills his promises, who follows the prophetic commandment, تَخَلَّقُوا بِأَخْلَاقِ الله. Follow the values which Allah himself examples. And he is the one who has said, صَدَقَ وَعْدَهُ He fulfills his promise. He promised, لَتَدْخُلُنَّ الْمَسْجِدَ الْحَرَامِ You shall certainly enter the sacrosanct mosque on that glorious day. Uh, be like him. Adopt his virtues. He is merciful, be merciful. He is just, be just. He is forgiving, be forgiving. This is the meaning of this extraordinary hadith. Emulate the character traits of the divine. So be also amongst the sadiqeen, amongst those who are people of sidq. The third, إِذَا خَاصَمَ fajar. When you're in a dispute, and disputatiousness is disliked in Islam. Two people who maybe have only been practicing Islam for a few months, arguing in the mosque. No, brother, there's four rakahs of sunnah after maghrib. No, my shaykh, this is all of this, astaghfirullah, and they don't know anything. Huh? The Holy Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam, says, Inna abghad al-rijali ilallah al-aladdul khasim. The people Allah dislikes most are those who are really argumentative, stubbornly argumentative, particularly in sacred places, and particularly on the Hajj. Why does Allah say, فَلَا رَفَثَ وَلَا فَسُوقَ وَلَا جِدَالَ فِي الْحَجْ No obscene talk and no arguments on the Hajj. No, oh, turn up the air cooler, oh, turn it down, let's go for the Jamarat now. No, let's go, let all of this wrong, bad, quiet, submit. As long as you get your obligations done, don't argue with anybody. This argument is for the Hajjis, but it is for us also. So when we argue, if we have to argue, if we find ourselves in an argument, perhaps with our landlord or in some dunya thing, do not tell lies, do not go beyond the bounds. When anger is faring up, do not allow that anger to take you out of the truth. And the fourth that we want to look at in this khutbah from this beautiful prophetic diagnosis. إِذَا عَهَدَ غَدَرْ when he makes a pledge, he betrays it. A hadith in Bukhari and Muslim from Ibn Umar has the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying, لِكُلِّ غَادِرٍ لِوَاءٌ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ يُعْرَفُ بِهَا Everyone who broke his pledges will have a flag which he will be waving on the Day of Judgment. And one day those things will be made clear. Yawma tubla sara'ir On that day all of our secrets will be made plain. So don't think that you've ever successfully hidden something from the gaze of others, let alone from Rabb al Everything one day will be revealed in your nakedness, in our weakness, the dark spots in our heart, the consequences of our insincerity. One day everything will be unveiled and revealed, and we will stand ashamed. So we wave this flag, those who had pledges and didn't fulfill them. One aspect of this is returning things held in trust. Even a simple thing, you borrow a book from somebody, you have to return it. Huh? It's an amana. Inna Allah ya'murukum an tu'addul amanati ila ahliha. The Qur'an says, Allah commands you to return things you hold in trust back to those who own them. We should regularly do this with our property. And if we see something, oh, that actually belongs to so-and-so and I haven't returned it to him yet, that should be your first concern. And this is one of the signs of sidq. And when the Muslims, as a community, become known for this, people of amana, then they're walking in the footsteps of the one who is called as sadiq the truthful one, not the munafiq, al-ameen, the one who is trustworthy. This was his name, even before Islam, al-sadiq, al-ameen. The two go together. In other words, you can be trusted with things. Somebody lends you money and they know that you'll pay it back. And as soon as you can, that's a sign of amana. And not to do so is a sign of nifaq. 
So with these beautiful pieces of advice, the Holy Prophet وسلم, is telling us how we should be and that we should be our own doctors, NHS direct for ourselves, but looking at the heart, the amrad al-qalb. And what extraordinary victories cannot await us in the situation where the ummah is once again characterized by sidq and amana. Look at the unlikeliness of the conquest of Makkah. Look at the extraordinary event which we commemorate, the good news. The joy of the Eid is connected to the joy of the unexpected Nasr, the victory, the Fath, the triumph, the opening, which was the conquest of Mecca, against all the odds and against all the predictions of everybody and against the expectations and the secret fears of the Munafiqeen. Huh? The promise was fulfilled. You shall certainly enter the sacrosanct mosque. And on the day of Hudaybiyah, some were wavering, even some great Sahaba were wavering, and they were thinking, this is, this is all strange, how can it happen? But those who had true faith in Allah and His promise, and truly put their hands into the hand of the Rasul, alayhi salatu wasalam, having made their bay'ah to him, they did not fear, they were not grieved, they knew that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger are true, true in their promises and look at the victory they were given. And this is a lesson for all of us in our lives. Sometimes within our hearts we think, well, I have to play games and sometimes mislead other people in order to get my haq even, what I am owed. No, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who chooses everything and we have to put ourselves in the way of his best choices. And that means whatever the situation, even if we lose out in something, even if we lose an argument, even if we lend money to somebody, we never get it back, that we always remain people who are within the boundaries. And then we are obeying Allah's commandment, وَكُونُوا مَعَ الصَّادِقِينَ Be with the truthful people. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst them and keep us far, far away from the sickness in the heart that is nifaq. And make this coming year, inshallah, better than the previous year. In our outward circumstances, as this difficult pandemic, inshallah, winds down, and inshallah, better also in our inward lives, so that we are individuals and families and neighbors and mosque goers of Sidq and Amana, following in the footsteps of the Chosen One, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, hoping for great victories and openings, just as they were given to him and the truthful amongst his Sahaba. Barakallahu Fikum, Assalamu Alaikum, Wa Rahmatullah. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد الحمد لله رب العالمين ولي المتقين نكال الظالمين أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله الملك الحق المبين محمد رسول الله صادق الوعد الأمين أوصيكم ونفسي بتقوى الله فإنه خير الزاد وإياكم ومحدثات الأمور فكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار واعلموا أن الله قد أمركم بأمر عظيم أمركم بالصلاة والسلام على أصدق الأنبياء والمرسلين فقال جل ثناؤه إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد اللهم إنا نسألك رضاك والجنة ونعوذ بك من سختك والنار يا عالم السر منا لا تهتك الستر عنا وعافنا وعف عنا وكلنا حيث كنا يا ذا الجلال والإكرام أمتنا على دين الإسلام يا ذا الجلال والإكرام أمتنا على دين الإسلام يا ذا الجلال والإكرام أمتنا على دين الإسلام يا رب العالمين واجعلنا من الصادقين الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد أسعد الله عيدكم 
وأعاده عليكم وعلى جميع المسلمين بالنصر واليسر والتوفيق والعافية والشفاء إن شاء الله بارك الله فيكم والعفو منكم والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وعيد مبارك